identity race treatments and psychological facts come from? The answer lies in a process that powers every discovery we trust in. It's called research. In this session, we will understand the meaning of research, especially scientific research, and how it forms the foundation of psychological knowledge. Now let's look at what the simple meaning of research is. The term research is actually made up of two parts. The first is re, which means again, and the second is search, which means to look closely or to examine a bit further. Now put together, research simply refers to a careful and systematic search for knowledge, often repeated and refined over time. According to Grinnell in 1993, research involves a careful, systematic and patient study undertaken in any field of knowledge to establish facts or principles. Now in everyday terms, research means looking for facts, it's looking for answers to questions or even solutions to problems. In terms of scientific research, scientific research is a more structured and objective form of inquiry. It is systematic, which means it follows a set process, and it's objective, which means it avoids personal bias, and it's empirical, which means it's based on observed and recorded evidence. Now, the goal of scientific research is to develop an organized body of knowledge through controlled observation, leading to theories, and then to generalizations and principles. Now, this will help us to predict and control behavior, especially in fields like psychology, where human action is under study. Let's look at some of the definitions given for the term research by experts. Now, research is defined as the manipulation of things, concepts, or symbols to generalize, extend, correct, or verify knowledge, which means that we are generalizing what we have observed, the symbols that we have used, the concepts that we have seen, and we're extending it and we're using it to a larger body of knowledge, applying it to a larger body of knowledge and determining whether what we have observed in the initial is applicable and correct in the vast um, majority as well. So here manipulation refers to experimentation that allows researchers to test ideas and to arrive at general conclusions. Now, Kerlinger in 1973 defined research as a systematic, controlled, empirical, and critical investigation of hypothetical propositions about the presumed relationship among phenomena. So Kerlinger was just describing what research is, that it has to be systematic, it has to be in a controlled environment, it has to be empirical, as in we have hard data to um, support the observations that we are making and uh, we have to observe it in a critical manner instead of using personal bias it has to be critically investigated and then we form a proposition or a hypothesis saying okay this is what we have observed in this particular group of people and therefore we presume that there's a relationship between x and y which results in this phenomena so this is how research is usually formulated. Now this definition highlights that research must be well planned, it must be unbiased and based on real data and involve a critical approach to testing hypotheses. Now Burns in 1994 gave a more straightforward explanation. He said research is a systematic investigation to find answers to a problem. Now this definition actually emphasizes the practical purpose of research which is to solve a problem through organized inquiry. Let's now take a closer look at the research process. So research typically follows a systematic method consisting of the following steps. The first is enunciating the problem, which means clearly stating what is to be investigated. So when you clearly state something, it becomes very clear what the purpose is, what is to be expected from the research, what are we doing it for, and having that problem statement clearly done is very, very important and gives structure to the rest of the research. Now the second is formulating a hypothesis, which is developing a testable prediction, which says maybe if I wear a yellow dress, it will rain. That's the hypothesis. Let's say that I have a hypothesis like that. So the next thing to do would be to test it out, which means wear a yellow dress and see if it's raining. So this is just a silly example, but it's an example of how a hypothesis is made. You're trying to see if there's a cause and effect. So if I wear the yellow dress, does it cause it to rain? Um, if somebody else wears the yellow dress, does it cause it to rain? If 10 people or more wear the yellow dress, does it cause it to rain? So, you know, that's how the hypothesis is formed. Now then there's of course the aspect of collecting data or facts, such as using methods of observation and interviews and experiments or surveys, 
um, just how the this is collecting data means the different methods that we use to gather the information which we will be using to decide whether the hypothesis we have made is correct or not so the data can be uh, observed um, if it's in an open field and there are lots of people there and we don't want to intervene we want a, um, a simulation of day-to-day -day life and we want to observe what's happening then you would use observation as a method if you have a direct interview or conversation with somebody and are asking them questions about whether they do certain things in their life or how many times do they wear a yellow dress or whether uh, when they are irritated do they lose their temper more or do they uh, are they still able to maintain integrity in conversations that could be a cause and effect relationship that you could have in a direct interview understanding that you could conduct experiments where you keep people in a certain environment like a very extremely noisy environment to observe if noise is actually causing them to become irritated and lose their temper so that becomes an experiment then there's surveys as well where you put around questions, multiple choice questions and um, send it to people either via email or you uh, can send it via post and then have them mark what their answer is in there. So that's what a survey does. All of these are just methods of collecting data that we use later on to determine whether the hypothesis we have made makes sense and it has actually a correlation, whether it's true or not, firstly, and whether there is a certain connection between the two factors that we have hypothesized. So let's say that my problem statement or my hypothesis was uh, extremely noisy environments or high noise um, in, the, in the surroundings or the environment causes people to become irritated and lose their temper. So if that's my hypothesis, then this is how I collect the data. Then of course the next step would be to analyze the data, which is identifying trends and relationships or insights from the data. And finally, the last step is to draw conclusions, which is either by finding a direct solution to the problem or creating a general theory. So either we find a solution to a problem, that could be the reason why we did the research to find a solution to a problem, or we find a general statement or a general theory that is applicable in small scale and large scale. So what is applicable to a small group of people of maybe two or three, to maybe a large mass of thousands of people, for all of them it's equally applicable. That becomes a general theory. Now this process helps ensure that the conclusions drawn from research are reliable, replicable and scientifically valid. So let's see what is the importance of research in psychology. In psychology, where the focus is often on complex and variable human behavior, research actually helps us to ensure that our insights are based on evidence rather than just assumption. So thanks to research, we know how memory works, we have found out how learning can be improved, we've seen how behavioral changes occur under different conditions, and without research, psychology would lack the rigor and trustworthiness needed to impact real-world issues. So to conclude, research is the engine that drives knowledge forward. It is not just about gathering information, but it's asking meaningful questions, using structured methods, and arriving at a logical evidence-based conclusion. Whether we are solving for problems, we are testing theories, or we are predicting outcomes, the role of research remains central to psychology and all scientific fields.